Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Bai. I'm the Director of Programming at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Denver. And welcome to Narkita Gold, Black in Denver. This is a program that we are presenting with artist Narkita Gold in conjunction with her exhibition of the same name, which is currently on view at MCA Denver. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Before we begin the conversation, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the horrific acts of violence that occurred in Georgia yesterday and the recent surge in violence against Asian and Asian American and Asian Pacific Islander communities across the country. MCA Denver condemns these acts of violence and stands in solidarity with AAPI communities. MCA is coming to you live every Wednesday throughout the run of our exhibitions with programs hosted by the artists on view in the exhibition and presented by the museum. We love being able to bring you this amazing content throughout the pandemic. You can check out all we have coming up at mcadenver.org slash events and subscribe to our YouTube channel right now so you don't miss a thing. Thank you for tuning in today and every Wednesday. If you have the means, please consider donating to support MCA Denver programs. We suggest a donation of $10, which is what we would ordinarily charge for tickets in the before times. But of course, any amount helps. So thank you so much for your support. Today we present Narkita Gold, Black in Denver, and I'm pleased to welcome our host, Narkita Gold, and her guests, Jalisa Williams, Z Clark, Representative Leslie Herod, Solwazi Johnson, and Marquise Tate. Narkita Gold was originally a public relations professional. She blends her gifts of photography with storytelling. Her project, Black in Denver, is a portrait and interview series that takes a critical look at identity, specifically at small Black communities, solitude, and the evolution of the self. Jaleesa Williams is a mindfulness educator in the community, as well as a lecturer in the social work department at MSU Denver, who makes her approach to life and work intentional. She wants te to teach people to breathe deep, intention plus action equal magic. Z Clark is the founder of Reclaiming Flow, which offers mindfulness training workshops to address the unique challenges of black women and people of color in the workplace. She is a Harvard Business School graduate who has led teams at Fortune 500 companies and tech startups in Silicon Valley for more than 20 years. Representative Leslie Herod was elected in 2016 as the first LGBTQ African-American in the Colorado General Assembly. She is the chair of the House Appropriations Committee, a member of the Committee on Legal Services, a member of the Joint Budget Committee, and the chair of the Colorado Black Democratic Legislative Caucus. So Wazi Johnson has been practicing and teaching Buddhism and mindfulness meditation for over 25 years. He is a health educator, trainer, and disease control specialist for the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment and the US Center for Disease Control. Marquis has a background teaching in high school education as well as working in juvenile corrections. After obtaining his master's in social work, his focus was spent working in the mental health field. Currently, his study and area of practice have been focusing on assisting others in their sexual, spiritual path towards through touch and massage therapies. Please welcome Narkita, Delisa, Z, Representative Herod, Zolwazi, and Marquise. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello, so, happy everyone. To, so happy to see you. Hello. I'm glad you're all here. And um, I think we're going to jump into the presentation and then jump into the conversation portion of our um, program. All right. Um, so Black in Denver is my portrait in the interview series. And um, throughout history, Black people have been stereotyped and generalized by the mainstream media. From the media's criminalization of black men to black women, being, black women being labeled as angry and loud. Black people have been dehumanized by anti-black imagery and have dealt psychological injury from the legacy of slavery and lynching. My work is twofold. On one hand, it is a counter narrative to generations of damaging stereotypes and tropes. It seeks to reveal to the viewer that blackness is not a monolith, but a rainbow of identities. In addition, many of the people that I speak to and the voices that I include are centered around <laughs> racial healing and mental health. I created Black in Denver because this is the place where I lifted the heavy invisible cloak of oppression, saw myself, chose to be myself, loved myself and was loved in return. All of this has helped me create a well-rounded life of liberation. 
Because of my experience, my work seeks to understand what it means to be Black in Denver. What I have found are the following. Community, interdependence, freedom, authenticity, and the most important, the transformative power of love, which is what we'll be talking about today. So um, before we get started in the conversation portion, um, I would like to ask everyone who's here to talk about, you know, briefly about their own healing journey and how they facil or how they facilitate healing, racial healing and why. So Solazi, I'll start with you first because, you know, in recent, with the recent events, what happened today, what happened yesterday, um, I would like to ask you about something you said during our conversation. You said, I am one who was here to serve and support healing. Uh, not just in the black community, but for all beings. So what does that mean to you and why? Why is that so important? Well, uh, thanks, Narkita. And I want to touch on really briefly my journey, my journey to healing. And it was born out of suffering, uh, my, my own suffering and uh, understanding and being committed to the path and understanding that there, there can be a different way. So when I was able to see the suffering in myself, I could mm. see suffering in others. And there's an understanding. Well, we don't under, we don't suffer in the same ways and for the same causes, but we all suffer. And when I see that in others, I, I see the interconnectedness between all beings. And I believe when when I can be free of suffering and liberated, um, it supports others, and, and I can help others in in being free and, and liberated uh, from suffering. So it's this interrelatedness, this interconnectedness. Mm -hmm. uh, this, sense of community uh, that we we can lift each of us each other up in our path uh, and journey to liberation beautiful um z i'll let you go next hi yeah i'll talk about racial healing particularly because the work that i do actually stems from my own suffering as well i think with a lot of healers you find that we experienced suffering, went to go learn how to heal ourselves, and then we wanted to help others. So for right. me, having worked in corporate America for t over two decades, I experienced a lot of microaggressions in the workplace, watching my white colleagues move up a lot faster than me, and just mm -hmm. like, you know, it was a challenging experience. And so what I do is I leverage mindfulness tools and techniques to train black people and people of color and how we can use tools like breath work and meditation to help us heal when challenging things happen at work because they will, we're still on a very long journey. Mm, thank you. Um, Rep Herod, what about you? Yeah, well, first I just wanna say um, thank you so much for having me to the MCA and also uh, Narkita, thank you for inspiring so many folks with your series. Uh, I know it started as a, you know, and a little idea that folks maybe didn't quite get um, but now that I see it live and I've seen it across Colorado, it's just been so inspiring. Um, and, and to meet all of these folks too, some I have met, some I haven't. Hey, I've seen your faces. Uh, it's just really cool to, to, to share this space with you all. The question is actually quite hard for me because um, I don't know that I have, you know, really been on a healing journey um, and, and it's with any intentionality. Um, and I think that's something that uh, is kind of hitting me in the face these days, probably why I'm here to, to chat with you all too, um, because it's something that we need to do. Um, as a black woman, I have probably um, focused more on taking care of others or my work instead of dealing with the trauma um, that we all and that I have faced individually. And so the way that I deal with it really has been trying to right? some of the historic wrongs, um, fighting against mass incarceration, ending the war on drugs, um, looking at building black wealth. These are all things that I've focused on in my work, but I have not been able to do the work or I've not done the work um, intentionally with myself. And so it's something that uh, I plan to engage in and I appreciate you um, offering a space to have that conversation. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Jaleesa, what about you? Um, yeah, so a mad appreciation for being here. This is beautiful. Um, and so I, I definitely agree. I feel like there has always has to, there's a level of suffering that I had to experience, but mine was like mad interesting. It was, uh, I was 13 and I got shingles, you know, mm. like, and shingles are stress induced, like chicken pox. And, um, 
I don't know why I don't understand those things. Those, what am I stressed out at 13 years old, you know? Um, but now as a researcher doing mindfulness techniques within black, brown, queer communities, um, teaching us how to connect with our breath, teaching us how to connect with ourselves again. Um, I've really been able to sit back and I've recognized, oh, you got shingles because of generational trauma, um, because your mother didn't have the ability to time or space to deal with her stuff, right? Your grandmother didn't, your great grandmother didn't, our ancestors did not. And so with that, like, I feel as if I've been very intentional around, so since I know this, um, I have to do something about it, right? And so um, I feel like I do it in a lot of different ways, navigating uh, yoga classes, mindfulness workshops. Um, I'm a professor. And so teaching power, privilege, oppression, like mm -hmm. as a black woman of my age, talking about these things at this time, uh, just promoting some, some really cool levels of healing, I think has been um, really impactful. Thank you. And Marquis, I know you're having some tech issues, but if you um, can share, I would love to hear you know, about your, your healing journey or how you are, you know, help facilitating racial healing and why. Yeah, I appreciate the question. And uh, my apologies for techno technology issues. Um, I think for me, my journey in terms of the understanding of a shift of direction came when I used to live in Los Angeles. And uh, I saw the strife between uh, black people and uh, people folks with Latino background out there. And it uh, really kind of shifted my mind, my thinking, and the understandings that create division within us all. Uh, it, it, uh, that journey has led to the, uh, the assessment of systems and how we all navigate these systems in the ways that we do. And uh, you know, coming to a place of, for me personally, I came to a place to understand that really connectivity is the answer. Love is the answer and a, a, and a disassociation from so many of these systems uh, for those who it might apply. And so mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about race and what I might do to move forward with race, I just live my truth. I live my reality. And I hope that affects those who are around me. That truth is that you know, we're all brothers and sisters and everybody on the planet. And really that's what matters, you know, um, when we talk about social structures and whatnot is that, you know, if we can get on the same page and understand that there's a socioeconomic power system here that really is right. in control and all this is just divide and conquer, um, then I think we'd be far better off and maybe the people would have a little bit more power in, in the direction of their lives. Um, mm. That's that's primarily what led me to the point where I am currently, and just love in my uh, my direction. Thank you. All right, so we're going to move into the converse. Dialogue um, setting. I'm gonna ask a few questions. Everyone has about two minutes to respond. Um, and if you have some, if you wanna to respond to what someone has to say, please do so, but keep it concise. And it's open, being open, open-minded, it's all about love. Um, so just speak from your heart. And I'm gonna start with the first question um, and anyone can go first. So my first question is, um, how do you define love? Um, I'll start, and I I, I think uh, there'll be some resonance uh, w w with how I define it. Um, mm. I remember a long, long time ago, I was reading the M. Scott Peck book, uh, the, the Road Less Traveled, and I saw his definition of love. And then um, more recently, in the '90s, reading uh, Bell Hooks' uh, book all about love and that definition. <laughs> so uh, that really resonates me deeply. So it's really briefly, it's the will to extend oneself for the purpose of nurturing one's own or another's spiritual growth. So for Ooh. me, it really helps me in terms of. Uh, love is it's not a noun so much it's about action it's it's about it, it's 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 a verb and uh, that whole extending oneself 
uh, for one's own spiritual growth. Spirit, you know, sometimes gets, uh, it's weird for some people, but for me, the spirit is about coming to like wholeness, body, mind, and spirit. And if I can nurture that in myself, uh, um, I think uh, I can learn to, I can help others in, in, in cultivating that and nurturing that in themselves. So for me, that um, it's, you know, it's tricky and it's, it's complex, but that um, the definition really, I, I think it's really powerful and it's something that, yeah, I, I really resonate with. Mm. I, um, I want to add piggyback on, on that. I mean, I agree with everything that Solwazi said. Um, for, for me, love is a deep understanding that we're all connected, like an underneath right. it all, we are one. And so if we treat ourselves and others in the best way possible, like that is love. And I wanted to just bring up a practice that really reflects what Solwazi said which is meta practice, which is loving kindness. And so there are different versions of this, right? So I'll just give like a brief version, which is, you know, you start with yourself, right? You hold yourself in your heart, right? May I be, and there are different versions, right? But may I be happy, may I be healthy, may mm -hmm. I be safe, may I live with ease. And then you go, that's whole thing to somebody that you love. And then maybe you move that to maybe somebody you have conflict with. And then you expand that to a community. And then you expand that to all beings, right? And that, that is love, starting with the self and expanding it out to everybody. Mm, I love that. Yeah, yeah. and I'll jump in on that and just say that it's so funny because I initially, you know, would thought that love was putting, um, putting you, someone else in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and as he explained, it's not that. It's, it's about holding yourself and holding others, um, holding community, holding someone else, holding holding space and holding others in a way um, that is that is loving, that is nurturing. Um, and, and, and I find that really interesting in, in my growth is really kind of understanding that. So for me, when you ask what is love, it's like, what do I see? And I see and imagine, you know, community, right? I see, right. I, I hear laughter and kids playing. Uh, I hear this, I, I feel nurtured, you know? And it's almost like I I can hear, you know, like two people breathing and trying to be in sync, you know? Uh, for me, that, that's what love is. Um, and it's quite frankly, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, I have to be honest, I struggled with this and I felt like I was about to dictionary.com this before I slid through <laughs> this panel, y'all. Um, because um, I feel very similar to, uh, you know, Leslie in regards to, for me, when I think about love, it's a feeling, right? Mm. Like it is just like to the bone, to the core, like it is a warmth around my heart. It is like a tingle up my spine. You know, it is just like when you feel like sun on your face, when you like stretch in the morning and it, it's like that feeling, you know, it, it could even be that action, honestly and truly, but it's just that feeling of just, oh, just giving yourself everything that you have, right? And I think um, a lot of my practice over the last few years, it's been very selfish. Um, and I'm very much so around, how do you do this to you, right? And so when we were trying to define love, I'm trying to like outside of myself, you know, but it's hard because my practice recently has been a lot of like, so what is Jaleesa like? How does mm. that feel, right? You know, pleasure activism vibes of like, how do I put pleasure first as I'm right. moving um, and taking each step? And so, um, yeah, when I think of, I, I love the ways in which you all have described it. And then I just wanna add, it's a, it's a bodily connection for me. Mm. Thank you. Marquis, what about you? I'm uh, actually glad I'm going after uh, Jalisa. Uh, she explained the emotion part of it perfectly. Um, I, I've given it some thought, and to me, love uh, is synonymous with appreciation. Ultimately, that's that's the closest word I've found that really comes to describe what love is. Which you know, love in the context of it is, you know, an emotion. Um, you know, when I think about taking walks, you know, Jaleesa mentioned, uh, I think you mentioned breathing, um, just taking time to appreciate life, regardless of what 
the situation may be. You know, a lot of times if we're looking for love, if we just switch the mind slightly, see it right in front of our faces. I know for myself, um, I had an exercise of this when my father passed. And, you know, you wallow in, in what is the pain of, of, of a loved one passing. But if one can find appreciation, love, for the experience that they have for this individual, this, this person, you, it, it, it just changes the experience in life. You know, if we take appreciation with every breath, with everything that we look and everything that we see, the interactions that we have with other people, the lens of the world shifts dramatically in my experience of it. Thank you. Um, I, I will share what I, I think. Um, I think that love is an energy, a way of being. Um, I, what Slovazi said really, really resonates with me that love is a verb. But I also heard someone say once that, um, how can you define something so powerful? And that really sat with me. And it's just, it just feels so good. Like that's so true. Love is so powerful. How can you define it? So yeah, thank you everyone for um, answering that first question. So back to what Slavazi said, love is a verb. What does it mean to be love? I'll, I'll start this one. Also, Narkita, you're asking these hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay. about this stuff a lot, by the way. <laughs> but I, I'm gonna try. So, you know, for me, it means to live and act with love every day. And recently I was introduced to this concept of the new story. So if the old story is one in which everything is about like value, like especially monetary value, capitalism, right? What if we created a new story, a world that was all about love, love for ourselves, love mm -hmm. for each other, love for the planet? What would that look like? And that's what it would mean to me to be love. If we all were love, because as I said earlier, we're all one. So if we acted that way, that's being love. Mm. Thank you. I think if we're talking energy, right, um, it's a vibe. So I kind of have this, this, this idea that if I'm vibing high and like I come into space and I tap you, you're going to get a little vibe, right? And then you tap somebody <laughs> else and you get a little, right? Like it's just, that's just what it is, right? And so if um, I always tell, you know, clients that come in um, and they're like, hey, I just, I want to be happy. And I'm like, all right, so be happy. I don't get it. Like, what does that mean to me? What does that mean? How, how do you become happiness? What does happiness look like, right? What does love look like? So how do you do things that feel lovely, right? How do you walk in that? Is it a, your favorite perfume, right? Like I spray so much perfume before I sat here, like y'all gonna smell me, right? Because I was just like, <laughs> I love this, right? <laughs> and like, that's, that's what it is. You know what I mean? And it's all about alignment. I can't say that I'm, mm -hmm. I am love, and I speak love, but then I don't walk in that as well, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just think it's about this vibration and how can I just vibrate at a level that allows vulnerability, where I'm held, where I'm, where I'm supported, right? Where I can just be real ugly sometimes, um, where I can get real cute. Um, and, and I just feel like we just vibe off of that. And if we all start doing that, the whole world's different, y'all. Like easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I feel like there's a lot of um, uh, water signs in the room here as an earth sign. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> but um, I just, I mean, this question is again, one that's like an, as an earth sign, it's like, what, these are very tough questions, you know, but I can feel love from you all. And so I just mm. wanted to say that and to, to put that in the space is that, you know, just talking to you guys, even on a computer through Zoom, like I am feeling the act of love from you all. And I feel like you all, like you, you I just can't wait to see you guys in person because you radiate it, you know, you, you all radiate it. Um, and so I just wanted to just say that. And I don't really know the answer, but I know I, I'm seeing it right now. Mm, that's beautiful. 
How about that? Thank you. Well, uh, for me, I'm a fire sign, I guess, Aries, yeah. fire sign. Uh, but uh, for me, when I think about it, um, and being a mindfulness teacher and uh, understanding how to direct attention and, and, and the power of di directing and giving the gift of your attention. So for me, how to be love is, is giving the gift of attention and, mm. and presence. Uh, we seem to be all so busy in this world, um, but I, I, I understand the power of, 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 of listening deeply and giving someone your full and undivided attention can be really, really powerful to help support people in, in, in feeling you, because there's a resonance that, that happens in, in being truly seen and, and not being mm -hmm. judged. Uh, to me, that's that's all about uh, being love, and <clears throat> but it starts with the self. So uh, and it's been a process right. to learn how to how to give that gift to myself. So uh, yeah, God, self love. You're right. It starts with the self. That's yeah. so true. Uh, I think for me, uh, to be love is to be authentic uh, mm -hmm. and to allow for authenticity in others. Mm. Um, that's, that's kind of the foundational element of it is really just being who we are, uh, you know, as long as it doesn't hurt others, you know, and we're not yeah. malicious in our intent. Um, it's all about being authentic and, and, and understanding that there is a beauty in the diversity that is life and an appreciation for that. And again, that, that's what love comes from, um, the differences in all of us. And so allowing not just our neighbors, uh, other communities, other countries to be authentically what they are, but also understanding that we need to also be, or we may find it beneficial to be on a journey of authenticity for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I'm going to move on to the next section. So I'm going to read two quotes and then I'm going to ask a question. Bell Hooks wrote, when we see ourselves as we truly are and accept ourselves, we build a foundation of self-love. In the fire next time, James Baldwin wrote, love takes off the mask that we fear we cannot live without and know we cannot live within. So what is the relation between love and authenticity? I feel like when I am able to show up authentically, that is when I am filled with love, uh, right? Mm. That's when I'm surrounded with love. That's when um, I'm being held up by love, right? When I can just show up, um, and this could be for myself, right? You know, I'm showing up for myself. I'm holding myself accountable, um, but I think, I even think on just like the slightest, the slightest transition. I I, I always talk to my students around uh, uh, code switching, right? You know, uh, I'm in higher education, and uh, I talk like I, I watched 106 in Park when I grew up. Um, and so you know, thinking about <laughs> how do I, you know, how can I just show up? You know, I don't want to. Hey, everyone, this is Professor Williams, right? Like, and then once I was able to lean into how do I just love myself, like how I show mm. up hundred percent when I, when I decided that, you know, everything else started to flow. And so I feel like that relationship, when those things come together, um, shout out to water signs, right? But the flow really hits that water being water, my friend really comes in when I feel like love and authenticity are able to um, combine. Mm. Um, I often talk about code switching as well, especially as I teach classes of employees like in the workplace, like black people at work, where code switching is just like survival. It's like I could get fired if I don't code switch and then I won't eat. So how can I feel like I can be myself, you know? And as I thought about this question, I'd say I'd switch it because Julissa, Julissa said, that, well, I mean, I'm not gonna like rephrase you totally, but basically for me, it's the opposite order where you're like, if I'm authentic, then I'm loved. And I'll just switch it and say, I don't feel, if I feel loved, 
then I feel safe and then I can be authentic, right? And so in, in cases when I don't feel loved, then I don't feel safe and then I don't feel like I can be authentic. And so I'm gonna bring mm -hmm. up a, a right. topic which is hair. Okay, see all this hair? You know, I didn't know what my natural <laughs> hair looked like till my 30s, why? Well, I'm of mixed heritage and my mother has straight hair and I grew up with her saying words like kinkinization and cursing my hair and the black part of my heritage. And, and so I did not, you know, while I know that my mother loves me, right? I did not feel, this part of me did not feel loved. And that translated into my adulthood at work where I mm. felt like I needed to straighten my hair. And that ties back to self-love. We've been talking about self-love, right? And I feel like it took me 40 years to learn to love myself. So right. it's a journey. It is. It is. I think that sometimes folks can feel like, um, or I can feel like love and authenticity might be at odds or in conflict sometimes. Mm. Um, like if you're being your authentic self. You are not showing love for others um, mm. or not showing up in love. Um, or that if you want to be your authentic self, you don't have to put love first. And, and I think that that's not exactly true. Right. And so I think, mm -hmm. uh, when we can, when we can, um, love and authenticity can coexist without feeling like it is pushing down your truth. Right. Or that you're having to step back for something that you don't, you know, you wouldn't, wouldn't, you don't want to, I think that's a really beautiful place to be in, you know? Um, so authenticity doesn't mean that you don't have to hold care for someone else, right? Um, it's just being your true self. But I do believe that you cannot truly hold love or um, be in a space of love if folks can't be authentic, right? Mm. Um, because then you're not loving someone's whole and true self or community's whole and true self. Um, you're choosing which parts of them are acceptable to love. And that's never okay. Mm. Mm. Thank you. I know for me, the uh, the response to this question is quite the same as my response to the last one. Uh, for me, authenticity and love are quite the same things. Um, and again, the allowance of that for other people to be truly who they are is a representation of love. Uh, it, well, I do love to hear the different reflections of the answers to this question because you're all, uh, I don't know, correct is the right word, but I see validity in all the responses. It's, it's great to see all these different uh, perspectives to the same question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling into uh, the definition of love. I think I talked about um, being whole, body, body, mind, and spirit. And so to be whole and to be authentic for me, is uh, really accepting all of who I am. That, that's yeah. being whole. Uh, yeah. The perfections, imperfections, right. which, you know, that, that's a hard thing to do, especially coming up in a world uh, where, I don't know, in this black skin to to be in, I mean, it could be life, it's life threatening. Uh, so, but to be whole is to embrace all of of who who one is, and then I think that that supports just the authenticity, uh, just flowing. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you, Salazi. For me, it's been a part of my healing journey to get to authenticity. So I had to love and accept myself, right? So accept the imperfections and accept every part of my being, and then I could truly love myself, and then I could really be myself. But I wasn't gonna get there until I healed from all the trauma that wasn't mine, that is mine, like that's, that is mine. I had to heal from all that stuff before I got to this place of authenticity. Um, so it's been a journey, yeah, thank you. So my next question is, what is the relation between love and freedom? I mean, I, I love this I'll go one. First on this one. <laughs> Who's going? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, for me, freedom is freedom is the outcome of love. I would say. 
Mm. Um, a lot of things that we don't talk about is, is, is the word condemnation and how important mm. that is when we're mm-hmm. navigating situations, you know, not judgment, but condemnation. You know, we all judge, but, you know, do we, do we condemn? And, and so mm. a lot of times we do. And so the allowance for others to have the freedom to navigate their lives as they so choose um, is really what loves for me. So the outcome of uh, that energy, energy of love is. Mm-hmm. I'll um I'll I'll follow on that one um, because I I it 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 reminded me of both a book and an art exhibit. Um, so there is a, an art exhibit and a book called Black Imagination. Um, the art exhibit was um, a few years ago in Chicago, I believe, and then um, and it was made into a book. But this woman, Natasha Marin, she asked black people around the world the question, well, a few questions, but one of them was, imagine a world where you felt loved, safe, and valued, okay? A world where you felt, and I sat there with that question and I was like, do I feel loved? Do I mm. feel safe? I don't feel safe. Mm. I really don't feel safe. Mm. And do I feel mm. valued? I guess it depends on with whom, right? So it wasn't right. so clear, but, if I was in a world where I felt loved, safe, and valued, then I would be free. So I'm with Marquise, right? Like it is the outcome of love that is right. freedom. And also you asked right. about authenticity early and the outcome is my ability to feel authentic, to be authentic right. as well. Yeah. Hmm. And I mean, I was just gonna say exactly um, what Marquise said and Z, I mean, that is, that is where I'm at too. And my dog is being really free right now and <laughs> uh, really crazily, which is always fun. Um, but you know, it is, freedom is so important, you know? Right. Um, and I think as we think about um, our fight for liberation as black people, mm. Um, mm. it's really about being free to be who we are, you know? Right. Um, and that ties so much into love to mm-hmm. freedom to love, you know, as a queer black woman, you know, free to love who I love, um, free to be black in any space, right? Um, right. Be authentic, you know, these words are also very um, intertwined. Um, and and I think sometimes folks forget that they're not only just intertwined, but they are descriptors of our black community, right? Um, and that's what I love so much about just this space and this conversation. Um, we are free. Um, but we are still fighting for our freedom. We are. Mm-hmm. So many good points, Leslie. Um, so I, every time I think of freedom, um, I think of Harriet Tubman. Um, that's my dog, right? So like <laughs> Harriet Tubman, when I think of Harriet Tubman, um, there's just something, um, the, she 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 was love right to mm. to leave and then to come back for my people right and i i just think that there's something about that connection between um having to love um what else is out there having to love the universe having to love more um having to love what you may not be offered right so you can work for that because they're going to offer us less um so often Right. And so, you know, Harriet Tubman was chilling and she was like, I'm cool with this little spot right here. You know, um, just so many beautiful things wouldn't have happened. And so when I think of love and freedom, I just think there um, I, y'all got the answer. If there's a, a mic drop moment. Right. Uh, Mark Quiz hit it with the with the outcome. Um, but I just think of like, have I ever felt so free in love? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think those are some things to really kind of settle in, Um, because every time I think about um, when the moment I feel free, I'm on a swing set, you know, and it's like when you're on a swing set and it's like right when it's about to come back down. And it's that moment, the gravity kind of sort of doesn't really exist. And it's just right. That's free to me. And so, like, how can I replicate and repeat that as much as possible? Um, Because, again, it's a bodily feeling. And so. I'm I'm really kind of just sitting in. Have I ever fully felt freedom in love? Mm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I, I hear you. The 
to Lisa the, the mic drop moment. So it's hard for me to, to really, I just agree with what's been said already, but it's interesting what's, what's coming up for me is an, an old saying, and I, I can't find the source of it, but I sometimes ponder this when I'm thinking about freedom. And somehow some guru said, uh, if, if you wanna be free, uh, it's important to find that uh, which enslaves you. So Ooh. that has become part of my meditation. What's <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's something, it's a, it's a deep inquiry you know, just unpeeling the layers of that particular onion, what's truly enslaving you. So, yeah. And how do we do that, Solazi? How do we... <laughs> I, I, <wouldn't... laughs> I think there... Uh, I mean, we have so much experience at the table here that there, there are many different approaches, you know, many different entries and, and gates to this. But one way is just to simply sit I mean, we're meditation teachers and and whatnot, and an and inquiry. One one could simply, deeply repeat the question and and listen uh, really deeply and feel. It's just not a, a cognitive thing, but feel into the question really deeply. And I I just trust that you know the answers, and it's going to be different for for each one of us. But I, right, that's I think that's that could be a process. Mm. Thank you. All right, um, another question. What is the relation between authenticity and freedom? And this has come up in my series so many times, so. I mean, I think these words are very similar, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, it's hard. I think it's hard to distinguish the two, um, but there is, you know, freedom in authenticity. Um, when I am my true self, I I feel free, right? Um, it's it authenticity is liberating, uh, especially in my line of work as an elected official. Um, being able to, you know, speak my truth um, is is freedom, and it is liberating, and it's a part of that journey to get to get stronger and wholer, freer, right? Um, right. So I just find they're, they're so connected. Hmm. I, I, um, I, I struggled with this one so much because I, I agree um, with what Representative Herod said, but at the same time, I feel like they have been at odds, that authenticity mm. and freedom have been at odds in history and today. So, you know, if you think about slavery, right, like mm -hmm. if we if our ancestors said what they thought, they, well, first of all, they weren't free. Right. But then even in the civil rights movement, right, like saying what you thought and being yourself meant risking not being free and mm -hmm. how that manifests today is, you know, and I talked a little bit about the workplace, but even more, you know, if I said if I was really my true self in front of a police officer today. I don't right. know that I'd be free, right? Like I, I actually mm. put on the full on code switching mask or try to be as invisible mm. as possible. I'm not mm. being like, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm like, please don't look at me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I love right. it and it is true. I feel so authentic um, when I'm free and I feel free when I'm authentic, but I don't, I think that they're at odds. Mm. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for bringing in the, the struggle of it. I was actually going to uh, reflect something quite similar to what Leslie uh, spoke so eloquently to. Um, but Z, I appreciate you bringing in the conflict because really that when we're talking about the struggle of things and how life is and how life can be, obviously there's struggle. There, obviously there's a, a lot to fight for. And that's what this whole thing is about, is fighting for the love that we can share amongst each other. It's going to be a battle for, them. you know, there's going to be a lot of perspective sh sharing and perspective changing, but, you know, none of this is easy, you know, and um, I just appreciate you bringing that struggle. I wasn't even, I was thinking about the question. I wasn't thinking about that side of it, uh, but that's a, a very important side. And it's also very important to reflect that this isn't going to be an, an easy go forward, but all we can do is really just be that example and uh, fight the battles that we can, you know, and hopefully, 
People get on that page. So um, a big part of my work and my path is to is to is the the desire to fully show up and 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 with an with an open heart. Um, so um, that's been my work, cracking and cranking this this heart open. Um, with an open heart, I feel like I am. Uh, authenticity flows as well and with that uh, freedom as well so I, it's all all linked uh, and as one for me thank you and I've got Lisa you sorry go ahead it's your space nope. I was about to it's say uh, yeah what they said um, <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead go yeah uh -huh, that one yeah next um no when when I think of this, I, I definitely am piggybacking. Uh, you can tell we've been in too many Zoom rooms by saying piggyback, but I am piggybacking off of um, what everyone else has already said, right? Um, I also, I have to say that uh, my relationship with authenticity is a lot stronger, I feel like, right? Mm -hmm. Like I've been really doing a lot of work on how do I show up authentically, right? Yeah. And with that, that has allotted me spaces and access to freedom i don't think um i would have had you know five right. years ago I, I don't think um the ways in which i show up in rooms um in classrooms with my clients right um it has allotted me some freedom in other opportunities it has allotted me freedom in my spirit like i'm not like oh do i gotta do this to show up in this space right so i feel like those things have just been so together for me right i feel like the one i've been working on is that love like and what does that look like feel like and sound like when we're navigating both of these together and um i was over here trying to think of like a math equation you know because it's like authenticity plus freedom equals love you know and like love divided by authenticity <laughs> put on a shirt man you got it put on yeah, a shirt. i was like all right cool you know <laughs> i was like if we about to pim dos in here right but i'm a whole social worker so that doesn't even work for me, like math wise. But like, I just think of how, how these things are, they just are all together, right? right. Like when you show up in one, like the others are somewhere, right? Like I, I talk to my clients around like depression and anxiety. When you have one, you definitely have the other. Like it's a little, it's somewhere in the back, like saying something, those are their tag teams, right? And so it's the same. I feel like when one shows up, another might be in the back a little quieter, maybe have not got as much energy or attention, but it's there. And so like, what happens if we actually put attention into that? Like, what could that look like? How could that grow? So I got some journaling to do, obviously. <laughs> and I think for me, I've also realized that there are some instances where I will have to wear a mask, right? You know, but showing up authentically and being in those spaces where I can show up as myself fully is just so freeing. Um, and liberating, and I advocate for that all the time. So, um, one more thing, one question. Well, more like a, I want your response to this statement. How do you feel about the following? The only way to freedom is through love. I'll say it one more time if you'd like me to. The only way to the only way to freedom is through love. And then we'll open it up for questions to other people. I mean, I, that resonates so much. I'm like, I'm almost just felt like, well, wasn't that just the mic drop statement? <laughs> like, what else? What else is there to say? Like, true. <laughs> Ain't that right, boo? True. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I totally see that. And I guess the only thing that I will add is that it's not just our own personal freedom, but freedom of the community and not just right. black people, but like right. society, right? And also right. like generations of history and trauma. So I'm gonna, right. you know, even like white people whose ancestors, right, did some things, like they also need some freedom too, freedom from all that that happened. And, and that, right. that, you know, there is it, like we inherit a lot of that trauma. Everybody's mm -hmm. inherited the trauma. And so if we love each other and each other, like everybody that of all rainbow colors, if we love each other, then we will 
all be free. Free, right? Yeah. I mean, I agree with that, but I had a very tough day today. I will say mm. at work, um, I spoke out against uh, violence against the um, Asian community and was met with such visceral like hatred from my colleagues. Um, not you know, just saying white supremacy doesn't really exist, or um, they didn't they weren't born as white, and or they did they didn't choose to be white or whatever. All this stuff, right? And so when we speak of love and freedom through love when, when with what was just said, you know, I have a hard time always connecting with that um, or believing that, to be honest with you, um, that that love is the way to freedom for people who look like me. Right. Because mm. um, usually it means us loving them and mm. not them going through the journeys that they need to go through. But mm. that's not necessarily the truth. Right. That's how I'm feeling it right now. But in this conversation and feeling, you know, and being in a space that is all black, you know, um, and feeling this, feeling the the energy from you all, I see that it has to be the way, you know? Um, and so it's like just reminding each other that you can love through all of that. And that doesn't mean forgetting or even, you know, excusing other folks' action, but it's still just lifting up and, and sitting in that love space. So I want to thank you all for um, pushing me in a conversation that I probably wouldn't want to be in right now, to be honest with you, speaking about things mm -hmm. that I don't want to talk about, um, but has helped me, I think, process some really tough points in my journey today um, and in general. Um, but understanding that we've got to sit in that love, especially when it's the hardest to do. I appreciate that. And even adding on to it, I think the reality of the fact is love does not mean it's pretty right? Love doesn't mean like, oh, okay, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, totally. White privilege doesn't exist, right? That's not love, mm -hmm. right? That That's nothing but just falsehood. That's continuing to push in to a system in which we are uninterested in being a part of, right? And so what love looks like is calling you out, right? Calling you in. What love looks like is bringing in some evidence-based research and saying <laughs> that's wild because white supremacy looks like it's been around for a minute. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm just trying to say, you know, so like, I think we have to think about what love can look like. And love has been hard for me. I remember when my parents, they gave me that tough love, right? Pick your stuff up, go to the room, right? That was tough love. Come in, let me talk to you about what this was. That's tough love. And I think that has to be had. And we get to choose as black bodies, how much capacity we have to offer that love, right? Um, but always make sure we're holding it for ourselves at the same time. I think Z brought up an interesting point about healing, um, racial healing, and that being a part of getting to self-love because of, because of history, because of being the descendants of either enslaved people or being the descendants of slave owners and overseers. Like there's healing that ha has to happen on all fronts before we can get to this place. And I don't think that we've done it, right? We haven't healed from her history um, because we don't want to acknowledge it, right? So I wanted to just throw that in there. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, when you posed the question, I also thought about love plus freedom. I, I went back to my ancestors and was thinking mm -hmm. about what was it like for them? So I, I truly believe deeply, and this is kind of the mis the mystery of life. But the, um, my ability to to kind of love and be free uh, serves my ancestors as well. I, I know mm -hmm. some way, shape, or form it, it benefits and helps uh, their healing as well. So mm -hmm. again, it really points to the interconnectedness and the mystery of all life. But yeah, mm. and that's actually a big motivator for me to do my work because I feel like, yeah, I'm doing this for my great great grandmother who was enslaved, I'm, and I have the records of her slave sales when she was sold for fourteen hundred dollars. So I know mm. the work that I do is impacting my my ancestors as well. So this, yeah, that's a big motivator for me. Um, I think for me, uh, it comes back to 
the systems ultimately and uh, our individual path, our individual course of what love is and how that equates the direction of freedom. Uh, you know, we all have to take a look at, I don't know, what the, I can't recall the, the quote that was said that uh, Sawazi had mentioned earlier, but it was an amazing quote. Um, uh, reflect, I believe it was reflecting about, um, I can't remember what the quote was exactly, but it was a great quote. Anyway, uh, when we talk about the direction of freedom and love, really we have to find that without, in ourselves. We have to understand the systems that have given us, given us the narrative of what love actually is and how that is supposed to show up, what the representation of that is, and understand that that which is given to us in terms of our information many times is coming from those who will profit from our following of these particular principles that they're and definitions that they're giving us. And so having the ability to sit here and really explore the depths and understandings of love and how they might help how they apply to our societies and how we might be able to all benefit from all of this, I think is, is paramount to the understanding. And, and Leslie, I appreciate you sharing your experience today in terms of you know the space that you were in and uh, how you have allowed yourself the flexibility to take in some some different perspective today. And that's that's love. You know, we all need to do that, you know. So I appreciate this for Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we have a question from the audience. It says, beyond this conversation, will you or any of your panelists host future opportunities for Black folk in Denver to dive into creative liberation? I mean, I guess I'll, I'll comment. Um, I co-lead an organization called Black and Brown Women's Alliance. And we do monthly events. It's a monthly BIPOC event that's not just for women. So it was just BIPOC folks. Um, and that's like meditation. There are different themes every month. Um, we also do a full moon, uh, Black women's full moon meditation. So if you're interested in mindfulness, um, the Black and Brown Women's Alliance, you can find us on Instagram. It's Black and Brown Women's Alliance. <laughs> I mean, I'm absolutely happy to join any conversation like this. Uh, it definitely provides uh, the balance my soul needs. Um, I'm actually jumping off of this to go and speak um, about uh, toxic masculinity and black queerness. Um, so, you know, you can, when you're done here, you can hop over to the next Zoom room or whatnot to, to have that conversation um, with the, the color of conversation with Martha Vineyard's Film Festival. Um, but we need to have more of these conversations. We need to be in these spaces together. And when COVID is, is, has passed its journey through us, um, hopefully we can celebrate what we've learned through this journey together um, and, and continue to move forward in person in each other's spaces and energies together as well. So thank you so much for having me. I'm sorry I have to jump, but I really appreciated the conversation. Thank Bye. you so much for joining us, Leslie. Bye. Bye. Jaleesa, I think that you can speak to, you know, what you've got going on in the community when it comes to creative liberation? Sure, yeah. Um, I feel like I used to do so much more, so I feel like really like to the back with this question, but um, um, I definitely, my friend um, Leslie Pace, so shout out to Leslie, um, and mm -hmm. I, we have a, um, a podcast, it's called The Soul Subliminal, and so um, we drop new episodes like every week, um, and we are doing mindfulness conversation, um, holistic hoism, and just really tapping into ourselves. I said that, mm -hmm, that's all easy. Um, just like really learning how to tap into ourselves, our bodies, um, having great conversations. We have a beautiful um, conversation and interview with Narkita here. Um, but when I think of that, um, that's kind of like the main way I feel like right now I'm doing some liberative work for my people. Um, I have been doing a, a big pivot, right? Just a really large pivot over these last few months. Um, and instead of doing as much for the community, doing a lot more for myself um, as I'm transitioning into um, hopefully get into a PhD program. And so Ooh. we're just doing, we're doing some slow turns right now. So I just got to take a little time to myself, but Shout out to the Soul Subliminal, um, so you can hear some good things in between. Mm. So it's a great question, and I've been the whole time we've been together. I've been thinking, oh man, I hope that at some point we could collaborate. 
those of us together and and just do some amazing things together. So uh, I would love that. Just I, I'm putting that out there that that that's my hope that we can do that together. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that um, for my partner and I, the importance is raising the, the vibration here in, in the Denver area and really just uh, trying to give informal get togethers at the house, whether it be movie nights, whether it be uh, something like this, you know, I, I had uh, thought about having you all over to the house to have discussions and maybe invite the community in. Um, uh, having events around sexuality and the openness and the allowance of exploring one's own authentic sensual, uh, sexual space. Uh, there's, there's a lot that we have in mind for sure to bring the community together. And when I, when I say the community, I, I don't just mean the black community. I don't just mean the queer community, which is a part of the community I'm from. Uh, I also mean our white brothers and sisters, everybody coming together. Um, we have a mode of, of operation that I'm hoping that will create comfort in that. Uh, but that's that's what we have uh, on the horizon, hopefully. That's what we're shooting for. Thank you. So if someone asks, how can black people get more involved in the community in Denver? I think it takes a lot of intentionality. Um, that's the one word that keeps coming up for me is that you have to be intentional um, about getting involved in community because it's, it's, it's difficult to find, you know, um, but once you find it, it is beautiful. It is special. It is unique. Um, I think if it looks, Narkita, you froze for a little bit. Are you back? Okay. Yeah, back. yeah. You saw. You talked about being intentional. That's what we heard. You have to be intentional. Okay. Yeah. You have to be intentional. It's difficult to find community here in Denver, specifically Black community here in Denver. Um, but I think with intentionality and just continuing to try and you know be diligent about it, um, yeah, that there is a way to to find to find it and get involved. I do have a Facebook group on the Black in Denver Facebook page that where people are asking questions, asking for like, where's a barber? Where can I, where's a great place for like affordable rent? You know, so if you find that Facebook group and, and join it, um, I'm sure you can get connected with some folks in that way and get involved. Yeah. I am. Um, I have some suggestions on that front because I've been in Denver for about two years now. So I, I feel very, very new to Denver and was like, where are the black people? <laughs> um, and so uh, what I found was that there are meetup groups um, and, and other and organizations based on people's particular interests. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. If you're interested in the outdoors, which I am um, as a rock climber and snowboarder, um, I uh, there is a, an organization called Outdoor Afro and it's national, but there's Outdoor Afro Colorado. Or if you ski, I think it's called the Denver one's called like Ski Noir or 5280. You just Google mm -hmm. black people skiing in Denver, you probably that's going to come <laughs> up. And so, you know, if you're interested in the arts, if you're interested in writing, I think if you do a little Googling for like black people and the thing, you'll probably find it. Mm -hmm. I might just slide through five points. You'll see somebody. <laughs> Ask them when they hang out, right? Like, I feel like, I feel like five points is really starting to get back uh, mm -hmm. to what it was. Um, and so I think, uh, this is a really good space um, to be able to meet some people. Shout out Trap Fitness. Um, there's also Slam Nuba. Yeah, so it just depends on what you're into. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? All right. Well, I think that's about it. And I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, and thank you for the audience for tuning in and listening to this conversation, which was amazing. Like so good, so deep. So I feel so much love right now. And I hope that you all do too. And I hope that people who are listening also feel all this love that I'm feeling. I hope you all have a wonderful night.